Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm going to help you figure out how to solve the rocket problem in under five minutes. Let's get started. Before I start a physics problem, I'd like to set up a metaphorical toolbox with all the information that's given, or equations we already know. For this problem, I wrote down the distance between the asteroid and the craft, the initial velocity and mass of the craft, the volume and density of the asteroid, always being sure to convert to SI units. I, always, I also wrote down the equations for finding the gravitational and net forces, density of an object, change in momentum, and velocity and position update formulas. By the time I was done, my toolbox looked something like this. Part A. We know we have our asteroid and our craft. The craft is traveling with a given velocity and passes 1,200 kilometers over the asteroid. It will be experiencing the gravitational pull of the asteroid. Therefore, the change in momentum of the craft is downwards towards the asteroid. Part B. Recall the density formula to solve for the mass of the asteroid. We will need this to find the force of gravity. You should find the mass of the asteroid to be 5.25 times 10 to the 17th kilogram. Now you can solve for the force of gravity. Once you've found this value, multiply by negative r hat or 0, 1, 0 to find the net force. Lastly, multiply this value by delta t to find the change in momentum. You may notice that we weren't given a delta t to begin with. You can find delta t easily enough by using, using the equation delta x over delta v. Using this equation, you should find delta t to equal about 7 seconds. Part C. Here's what the trajectory of the craft would look like if it hadn't been interfered with by Mathilde. And here is the distance we're being asked for. First, convert 24 hours into seconds. Let's assume that the initial position of the craft is the origin. We need to find the final distance of the craft with and without the interference from the asteroid. We can assume the velocity of the craft will be constant when there is no interference from the asteroid. Use this formula to solve for the final position of the craft. We can also assume the average to be equal to v final in this scenario. Use the same formula to find the final position of the craft with the interference of the asteroid. Now subtract and you'll find your distance. Part D. The reason scientists can assume that Matilda is actually a loose collection of rocks rather than one single rock is, the, is that the hypothesis formed using the assumption that Matilda is one single rock threw the craft much farther off course than it actually did go off course. Therefore, the density of Matilda must be smaller than that of an actual rock. Thanks for watching.